Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, since Dr. Matthew has already joined us, uh, um, I think it's a good time to start. And by the way, we've waited today for everyone to join since yesterday, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the bad weather actually is a good weather for the UAE and we're glad always to have a showers, heavy showers from time to time. So today, as we said earlier, we are going to uh, uh, have a quick review over chapter 11 covered part and we'll go to the configuration part of the chapter. We're going to review all the configuration comments. We will prepare you for the com uh, upcoming labs, okay, where we will sit and practice all the labs mentioned over here. From time to time, we are going to use our packet tracer and we'll demonstrate some more packet tracer skills and new tools to navigate uh, through the tools of the packet tracer uh, menu, windows and everything. Okay, so after we finish inshallah chapter 11, we're gonna move to chapter 7 and 8, okay? Uh, I don't think that today we'll finish chapter 7. Hopefully we'll finish it and later on we'll move to chapter 8. Do you have any question before we start? Any doubts about your um, what we've learned yesterday, the uh, subnetting skills, IP addressing and everything? What we were proposing is a... Yeah, well this is what we were proposing is um, a session, face-to-face -face session where we invite all our academy instructors and uh, we'll revise um, subnetting skills, variable link subnet mask, mask and we'll give an extra tasks and sub uh, lab activities to do them. Okay, so uh, let's start with chapter 11. Well, great. Well, chapter 11, it's all about uh, configuring um, uh, Cisco networking devices like router and switch, okay? We will have a brief introduction over here about the iOS and role of iOS. Cisco devices, as we said earlier, Cisco devices just like a computer, it's a hardware where we have an, an iOS uh, installed on it. The iOS determines the uh, features of this device together with the extra hardware you add to the device. Okay, so you can modify your device. You can add some uh, 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 cards uh, to enable your device of being capable of uh, providing a service like an IP telephony and other services. Okay, so. Um, and uh, the Cisco device, we've introduced in the lab the Cisco device and we studied the different ports. We actually connected those ports to our devices. Just to remind you over here, uh, the console port was the port used for the management purpose where we connected to uh, our um, um, uh, serial port and we configured it using the hyper terminal and other softwares available with Windows. Okay. Auxiliary port and modem uh, uh, and modern access, uh, they're used again for management purpose. Okay, so they are not used actually for sending and receiving data information, real packets. Okay, now uh, most of the routers they have by default an, a fast Ethernet port. Okay, to connect the router to the switch where you can create a network using switches and routers. Okay. Now, all of the routers, they must have a one access, a one port where they can be con interconnected to each other. Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, we've seen how the uh, um, configuration, the minute we, we configure our router or our switch, uh, those configurations, they take effect immediately. You don't need to save them. You don't need to copy them to the NVRAM. The minute you do them, they are already used by the device. But the thing is, if you don't save them, if you don't keep a backup, if you don't move them from the RAM, because all the configuration you do are, are, are made on the RAM, they will be lost the minute you restart your device. We have, uh, we have a memory called NVRAM, non-volatile random access memory, that will retain the information even if you power cycle your device, okay? Uh, the same configuration and the same uh, information we have them in the running config, 
okay and the RAM we call them running config the minute we copy them to the NVRAM we will call them a startup config because the router will use them to start up what if you don't have anything in the NVRAM the router is going to go into the mode where we'll give you a questions if you wish and you'll answer to those questions it's an easy friendly uh, way of configuring your router but most probably we are not going to use that we will answer now and we'll go ahead and configure our device we'll see this again using packet tracer today okay we studied different level different levels of modes and privilege starting with the user exec command uh, mode and going to the privilege exec mode and going to the global configuration mode each of them can be protected with a password each of them can accomplish a certain task for you for example using the first mode which is the user mode you can ping and show some uh, you have some limited show comments okay for the privilege mode you have um, a little bit more advanced show comments okay and some few configuration um, configuration mode like the configure terminal that takes you to the global configuration mode through the global configuration mode we can configure our router so this is the most important mode to us and it has a sub modes where you can go to the specific interface and configure that interface okay so uh, uh, we've seen a, a, a the iOS prompt structure we've seen over here let me use my annotation tool okay we've seen over here the different cursors over here okay this one indicating the different modes and we have to be familiar with the modes and the comments available on each of the mode it's quite common that you uh, issue a comment and that comment is correct but it will give you an error message uh, most probably you are in the wrong mode so you have to correct it by going to the uh, appropriate mode okay do we have any questions so far well great okay this is an, uh, this is a common example of the different modes okay the same over here for the time being there is no difference between the comments used for the <coughs> for the switch and the router they consist of the same modes the, f the user mode the privilege mode and the user uh, uh, the advanced uh, global configuration mode okay so uh, so as we said each comment consists of the following they are very similar to comments used in DOS anyway it's CLI most of CLI comments are similar to each other like the, those that we use for Linux uh, Kubuntu, Ubuntu and different operating systems that use the CLI okay so the first one it is the prompt that tells you uh, that tells you in which mode you are the second one over here we have it the comment okay so the first one which was the prompt okay it tells you in which mode you are this is the comment and this is the 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 keyword or the argument whatever we call it an argument okay <coughs> fine okay so uh, um, there are many skills you can adopt working with the with the comments so such things it's for you to read they are not commonly used okay and hopefully in the future we, we will come across them and we'll practice them more and more okay now uh, the first task our first task was during the lab work was the the setting the clock setting the time and setting the date okay it's very important to set a correct time and correct date and by the way there is an um, authentication server where all Cisco devices they can get the date and update their information from okay so it's an automatic it can happen as an automatic process but since in our lab we are not connected to such device it's advisable to configure it okay so we've, we've, uh, uh, we saw how it's easy to configure the, the time and the date okay use enable 
Uh, okay. A end or exit. 